is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here we're going to be talking about several different horror topics in this video here today we'll be talking about scream 7 we'll be talking about i know what you did last summer and we'll be talking about some reactions to final destination 6 so starting off here with scream 7 melissa barrera made some comments and spoke about the divide going on with the film and where she is as it pertains to what transpired with her and the unfortunate dismissal she received from spyglass over things that you guys still have not been able to justify were justified because i'm still trying to figure out what was justified about it i didn't see anything anti-semitic so if someone again wants to prove me wrong dm me educate me i'm open to it so she said this to independent she said there are always going to be people that love you and people that hate you and people that are open to a story continuing and people that think that continuing it is ruining it if they want to go watch the next one cool if they don't also cool you just got to act according to how you preach and that depends on what you value what your morals are and where you can separate the art what whether you can separate that from art or not there are people who can't listen to r kelly anymore or michael jackson or can't watch woody allen films anymore and then there are people who don't care now some people took issue with the mention of michael jackson since michael jackson was never found guilty of anything and i just don't see what there is to get upset about i don't think she's really trying to make a comparison as much as she's just trying to make a point about how people will separate the art from the artist that's all I, I i thought it was just very simple but of course in true social media fashion few people got up in arms there's already things being thrown at her there's already people saying she needs to stop talking about it this is the this is the thing that was highlighted to me when melissa was dismissed it highlighted something to me that is more than prevalent and evident by what continues to transpire online on x twitter there's a difference between being a fan and being obsessed. A lot of people prove to me that I am not obsessed with Scream. I am a healthy, reasonable fan, meaning I am able to engage with something and recognize if it is right or unjust, whether I like someone or not. Some people never wanted her here to begin with because she's taking up a spot that people feel always should be Sydney Prescott, Nev Campbell's. I don't agree with that. I think the character of Sydney Prescott is owed some peace at some point in the story. But because she took up that spot, they don't even care if it's right or wrong. They're just going to agree that it's right because they never liked her to begin with. And then you have some people who are constantly attacking others. And it's happening on both sides. It's not just the Sydney and Nev people. It's also some people on the Melissa side of things. I'm going to continue to block people on both sides because you display behaviors that indicate to me you need to seek a therapist. You don't need access to social media. But what can you do so if i'm blocking you it's probably again i pulled your file if you read my tweet this might sound familiar i pulled your file decided you were stupid got some stupidity leaks going on you need some help and i don't want any parts of you because there's no reason for anyone to be calling nev a hag a whore no reason for people to be saying all these racist things towards melissa barrera it all needs to stop she's made it clear she's at peace with this but i know the fandom online is not going to be at peace with it because a lot of people within this fandom again they need to go to therapy they need help that's why i keep telling you guys you need to mute block and ignore some people are not interested in that what some people do is they want to block continue to keep tagging you in post even though they blocked you which again is very deranged behavior <laughs> and then they want to make it out that you're the bad guy or there's something wrong with you no there's something wrong with them something is wrong with them so everyone who is trying to have peace between the fandom you got to just start creating that peace because there's a lot of people online right now even melissa barrera has made it clear she's made peace with this this fandom is not going to make peace with this anytime soon a lot of people are they're just not they're not mentally well there's people who are writing or fighting for the right things and there's people who are just using this as a reason to display that they are mentally deranged i don't know what to tell you so let's move on and talk about I know what you did last summer. Jennifer Love Hewitt addressed the I know what you did last summer situation to Parade Magazine recently. So she's saying that she's close to signing. She said, we're so close. That's all I'm going to say. I feel like the actual audience now is like, what are you waiting for? Huh? It's such a dedic dedic delicate thing because we're trying to deal with the 911 schedule and the movie schedule. So we're just trying to figure it out and make it happen. If I'm going to come back 27 years later, I don't want to be in it for just five seconds. Like I don't want to be in it just to be like, that's that thing. Like, oh, well, there's the ghost of, I know what you did, what you did past here. She is. So I want to be able to carve out time to really be in it for people and to have it matter. So we're working on it. We're so close. The announcement will be so exciting when it happens for me as well. And I'm hoping it's soon. Now, here's the thing. 
she's right with her sentiment at the end there. She does need to have a role that's of quality, something that makes Julie's return worthwhile. But it's hard for fans like myself who are paying attention to what's been transpiring and the fact that they are already filming to really get that excited about what is coming for Julie. They're already filming for you, which means to me, you aren't necessary for the story. They have found a way to make you work within the story, but they could have done without you. And they're just deciding, hey, you know what? We can't do that. We need to get these characters back. I would love to read the draft that does not have these characters in it, the legacy stars. I'd love to read it and compare which draft is better. And I promise I would be able to identify that bringing the legacy stars back was not the best decision. Granted, I'm willing to be proven wrong. I hope to be proven wrong. But right now, with the fact that they're already shooting, she still hasn't even signed on. It sounds like this is a case of you could come in at the last minute and shoot all of your scenes without being there right now because you're not even that important to the story despite reports suggesting that you are. So we'll have to see what comes of this. We'll have to see what she ends up shooting and how it factors into the film because right now, all signs to me point that they are shooting in chronological order from all of the photos that have been coming out and it doesn't seem like julie is that significant right now but hopefully we'll be proven wrong because she seems to be excited to sign on and they just have to work it out within her schedule and i'm certain that announcement will be here around christmas time or sometime after christmas so the last thing we're going to talk about is going to be final destination bloodlines so here are two reactions to final destination bloodlines shout out to final 180 destination on ig for covering this one it says the movie came out amazing. You can see that a lot of attention was paid to every detail of the franchise lore. It is still in the editing stage. There are unfinished moments in the CGI. It looks fresh that it is a family. And from that, there is a very different feeling because these people love each other. The actors make us feel the pain of losing loved ones. Appropriate humor is present. The main musical theme is reminiscent of the first and fifth installment. The vision was a very detailed and intense, just like the other movies. There weren't many deaths, but they were all good and each was well constructed, making the kills impressive. Deaths by garbage truck, MRI, lawnmower, sign, lamppost, and the finale. There are a few stage deaths in the movie, so there are some funnier scenes than just the actual death scenes that were changed. The death of one of the characters, he dies not from a hospital sign falling on his head, but from a lamppost. A few changes to the ending was present as well. Now that, of course, is someone who has seen the movie sharing this another comment which is not online anymore i'm going to go over this has a complete opposite reaction saying that everything i said in my video is correct especially the kelly clarkson song this movie does not take itself seriously at all it felt like i was watching the scary movie 6 parody version of final destination it looks so cheap <laughs> with bad cinematography and bland production design we went from stephen quayle to the guys who directed the live action kim possible movie I was hoping for a return to the early 2000s Final Destination inspired by Scream, but the family angle makes it so melodramatic with large stretches having no kills or tension, just soap opera acting. The premonition grandma is like the new Lori Strode, an extreme survivalist. The audience cheered and clapped at the end, but as a longtime Final Destination fan, although some cool deaths and shocking moments occur, this movie does not justify its existence. The looping ending of FD5 is so good, but this one, it just combines element of FD2 and 3, but it's so stupid. Now, again, guys, we all could have a different reaction by the time we see the movie. When it drops, we still don't have an official release date, but I'm just hearing constantly back and forth reactions about this movie. On one end, some people will say it's amazing. The other end, people say it's trash. And then there's something in the middle where people are like, it's just decent. That's why I'm saying I, myself, and you probably will end up thinking this movie is great or decent at best. I don't see all of us coming out saying it's bad. But let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you can never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, to let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you would like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.